Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and if you remember recently I stayed in a radioactive hotel room. Well I went back just a couple days ago and I aimed to find out why. Why is it radioactive? And of course I found the answer to that. Now just starting out with the Geiger counters you can see I got the same results I did last time. Instead of a, a, a nice healthy 30 to 40 counts per minute at the most for a background. I was looking at 80 to 100, 120 plus. That's no good. I mean, look at that. 66 counts per minute. No, 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 no. This time I brought back better equipment. More equipment. That is a Polymaster 1703 M01B gamma spectrometer. Handheld, portable, and a dosimeter. That, of course, is my ever wonderful Inspector EXE Plus. Now as I wandered around the hotel, you might notice that everything was nice and, we'll call it ambient, just like it was before. No matter where I looked, the readings were always about the same. I mean, I'm not kidding you, everywhere I looked, uniform. And the only thing I can think of that would be uniform like this would be gamma rays. Beta would, would attenuate in the air. Alpha wouldn't even make it more than half of an inch to an inch. But gamma rays, and of course x-rays too, would be all over the place and it, this isn't really x-ray radiation because the polymaster doesn't pick up very very low energy x-rays but it does pick up gammas nicely so we're pretty sure at this point that we're looking at gamma radiation and and very uniformly distributed I mean look at this everywhere I go and this thing's very very well calibrated the seven the 0 0.17 microsieverts per hour you're seeing there amounts to anywhere from about 28 to 32 counts per second that's what this thing's picking up now I went here on a work assignment by the way too, I mean I didn't come back just for this, this is a thing I did, but this is my free time afterwards and I decided on my own time to solve the problem. By the way, here I am, see I'm wearing my work type clothes. Look, see, I can be dressed up nicely with my uh, uh, Robin's egg shirt on. There you go, looking all distinguished and such with my fuzzy hair. By the way, look at the granite and notice that usually the granite's actually pretty hot in hotel rooms. This granite is hot, but it doesn't do much. It can't even rise the polymaster above the background. It's already just too hot. I checked the bathroom too, looking for hot spots. And you see it is a little bit higher in the bathroom, but that's because there is more radioactivity in a bathroom usually anyway. I even left and went outside the hotel room. Here I go. I'm going to sh quickly shoot through all five floors of the hotel. I'm on the fifth floor. And you will see it. I know it's a little fast. You might have to pause the video to see it. But look at that. 0 0.18 on the fifth floor. So I'm headed to the stairs. 0.18 microsieverts per hour. Heading down to the fourth floor. There's the fifth. And you go down to 0 0.17 microsieverts per hour on the fourth. On the third floor, we get down to 0 0.15, 0 0.13, 0 0.2, 0 0.11. Look at that. The second floor, we're down to 0 0.10. And now down to the first, and we got down to 0 0.10 microsieverts per hour. Well, this time I brought better equipment. I am going to find out why. Universal uh, computer spectrometer, uh, sodium iodide thallium dope detector, a bundle of cables, a couple Geiger counters, because you got to bring Geiger counters, and of course the Polymaster, which is going bananas right there. Look at that. And a Frosty Bear. Now we had to calibrate the unit using potassium and a piece of uranium. One of the reasons for this is I couldn't bring a lot of my better check sources and these two guys right here are perfectly legal to drive around with in your car. I mean, it's I've actually gotten this from the Department of Transportation and from the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission. I can drive around with these things in my car all day long. Nobody cares. Perfectly legal. And it's about the only thing I could bring in to test with. Besides, these are the two most likely things to cause this. By the way, after I calibrated this, I took both of these two outside of the hotel and back to my car so they could not confuse the spectrum, but I needed them to calibrate. I was hoping the Polymaster would solve the issue and this, the UCS-30 would be like a backup confirmation. Well, I was right. But I brought extra equipment, you know, just in case. I like to come loaded for bear. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there was a worry about beta. I had a theory as to what was causing the problem. So you see this Pyrex jar that's sitting, or glassware that's sitting here? It attenuates beta like you would not believe. Perfecto. It's not real Pyrex, it's the crappy soda lime crap, but it works. So you're only getting gamma on the spectrometer. I even let the Geiger counters have a go at it. Notice the um, that normally the Geiger counter on the right, which is the CRM100, is usually just, you know, flattened by the Inspector EXP+, but they're not actually that far off. They're only about a third off of one another at this point. 
um, plus or minus. And the reason for that is this CRM100 is actually not that bad at gamma with its little LND 7317 probe. And so the result is we're really sure we're looking at gamma. I mean, I know now for a fact that we're looking at gamma, but you know, whatever. Okay, so next up here, I'm gonna show you the spec uh, the uh, accounts I got from the Geiger counter last time I was here, just to let you see one more time just how hot it is. And I'm not saying it's dangerous, by the way, too. I'm just saying this is how hot it is. Look at that, 78 to 80 counts per minute down the middle. Lovely stuff. I'm using Geiger graph here, by the way, from Mineral Labs. Fun little program. Now, the Polymaster solved it right here. K40 potassium, potassium 40. Look at that right on the dot. By the way, it thinks that it sees 3.96 kilobecquerels, and one kilobecquerel is 1,000 decays per second, plus or minus uh, uh, 2.5 kilobecquerels. This means the range is about uh, 1.46 kilobecquerels to 6.46. It's not very much, actually. That would be like having 200 kilograms of potassium chloride salt sitting right beside the device, about the same. And remember, potassium-40 is kind of like a rare version. Uh, uh, for every 25,000 atoms of, of, of potassium that exists, only three of them would be potassium-40. So it's a very small amount. It decays uh, via beta-minus 90% of the time to calcium-40. 10% of the time it decays to argon-40 via electron capture and emit that gamma. Famous gamma, 1,461 kilo electron volts. That's what we're looking for. And I was sure this was potassium. I was just sure of it. But I wanted to prove it because being sure of something is not scientific proof. Analysis and test is scientific proof. Oh, and occasionally it can actually also uh, decay via, via uh, beta plus to emitting a positron, which is also amazing. Wow. But anyway, so the Polymaster did it. I was very, very happy that it was able to do it. I'm very impressed with it. By the way, here's the potassium spectrum, by the way. This has nothing to do with what I found. I just wanted to show you what potassium looks like by itself in a gamma spectrum, just by itself. And I think I used like about 10 pounds of it to do this with the UCS-30. Anyhow, um, I am absolutely amazed that the Polymaster picked this up, and I was, I was really impressed about that, too. It also automatic isotope identified it, which was nice, too. I mean, I could see it myself in my own two eyes. There was also uranium picked up in the background, too, and that's probably also in the building materials. I get uranium spectrums everywhere I go, just little tiny bits of it, nothing to worry about. This was not a dangerous amount of radiation. I know people are going to say, oh, well, who are you to say what is or isn't dangerous? By the way, here's the USCS-30 at 8,000 seconds. And then at 12,000 seconds, see that potassium peak climbing right there? And at 30,500 seconds, and the rest of those, by the way, are all uranium decay series stuff. They're garbage that's normally there. And then 36,000 seconds. That's the maximum. That is pretty much how far I expect things to go. Now I'm just going to finish up here by telling you a little bit of information. The amount of radiation I picked up, okay. The UCS, I mean the UCS, sorry, excuse me. The Polymaster 1703M01B actually calculates dose rate and uh, and and, and uh, equivalent dose as well. It tells me in microsieverts per hour and in total microsieverts how much dose I picked up or could pick up. And it does this based on the actual energy of the photons hitting it, the actual gamma ray energy. So unlike like a Geiger counter that's calibrated for cesium-137 or something like that, and is totally wrong when you're inside of a room full of potassium salt, for example, <laughs> like this goofy uh, hotel, uh, this thing is actually reasonably accurate. According to the unit, for the 12 hours that I was there, I picked up 2.11 microsieverts worth of radiation. Now, you might say, oh, that's a lot. I don't know. Per year, if I, if I spent 12 hours a day, every single day in this hotel room, just 12 hours, half my day, I would pick up 770.15 microsieverts. That's under the limit. Well, it depends on who you're... Who, you say, who, who says what the limit is. But for most governments, that's that's far below the limit. So that's... It's hot, don't get me wrong. This is, this is like crazy hot. This is, should not be like this in a normal place. But this isn't dangerous hot. You know what I mean? It's not dangerous hot. So, my normal background for most places I go to is about 0 0.03 microsieverts per hour. To give you an idea, in the same period of time, um, I would only, in the same period of time in my house, for example, I would only pick up about 17% of what I would pick up in this hotel room. But it's 17% versus, you know, 100% in the hotel room. It's not actually a massive difference. To put it down, if I thought that spending 12 hours there gives me 770 microsieverts plus or minus 
and I normally get, let's say, about 0.3 everywhere else per hour, then that means that per year I'm picking up about 901.55 microsieverts if I stayed for 12 hours a day in this in this hotel, which of course I don't. That's not really the end of the world. Your likelihood of, uh, of, of, of illness and stuff as a result of that very small increased amount isn't very much. Um, I'm sure people can debate to the end of the earth how dangerous and, and horrifying it is, and you know, let me not take away from your your, your paranoia and so on. But uh, these these levels are lo are well below the um, national averages if you count in things like uh, X-rays and stuff that people take in. But you know, what the heck? We'll let people debate it. Anyway, neat hotel room, not particularly dangerous. Really amazing to find out. I'm glad it turned out to be potassium chloride. Uh, not potassium chloride, but potassium because that's what I had my money on. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and uh, have fun. And remember, test everything.